Single player games are probably the best sort of games. Playing on your own, when you want, no one to disturb you. Oh. All right, Anton, let's go. No, 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 no. I've got stuff to do. I'm a banisher and I need to save the world of New Eden. Anton, we're going to go to Tesco and get some food. Oh. In 2024, there is a lot of single player games that we need to get through. Ones that are already out and ones that you may need to start saving for. So let's run through these 15 single player games that you need to play on your PS5. And don't mind me, I've just had a hair transplant. I need to do this every hour. In number 15, we have a game that, back in 2001, was beloved by so many fans. Silent Hill 2 Remake. I never played the original, so I'm excited to dive into this one, following the story of James Sunderland searching for his dead wife after receiving a letter from her. There is a hell of a lot of horror waiting for him, including famous enemies like Pyramid Head as well as Eddie Dabrowski. Now it's Konami. Shit! So I'm hoping they actually deliver with this game, and even though we got that trailer slash gameplay trailer, at the PlayStation Showcase, and even though it's made exclusive to PS5 and it's made in Unreal Engine 5, yeah, I wasn't too convinced of how good the game looks. It doesn't exactly look current gen. Now, that's not to say it won't be good. I heard the story is incredible, but the gun animations and the combat looked a bit soft. And even when he stamps on that enemy, it sounded like a sponge. So hopefully it lives up to the expectation level and I'm excited because I love horror games and I've just heard so much about this one, but it should be coming this year. And after playing Silent Hill, the short message, you know what? I could, it's not even that scary. I, I, I wouldn't be, I'll be good. In number 14, we have Pacific Drive, a survival game where your car's survival is important than your own to help you escape the Olympic exclusion zone, which becomes even more hostile and intense as you progress. What's impressed me more about this survival survival game is that when you unlock pit stops and bases you would then be able to customize and fix your car. There's a lot to think about from the amount of petrol you're using. If you're in the UK just don't flip and go through you less, the biggest scam of all. <laughs> you have to think about battery life, tire wear, you have to repair your windows, doors, which you will be able to collect resources throughout the world. But in the world you have to dodge unnatural disasters and sometimes your car will play up, switch off, hood will just pop off and you will have to repair these back at your base. I'm loving these double A games more than triple just because of the amount of flipping money that goes into the AAA and sometimes they don't even live up to expectation and plus they take like 10 years to make and most of the fans get disappointed it's already out digitally but I am waiting for that physical release no to digital media alone in the dark is finally coming after being delayed from last year and you play as two protagonists Emily Hartwood and Edward Carnby as they both will travel to Dakota Manor a home for the mentally fatigued as they will be investigating the disappearance of Emily's uncle the set looks amazing especially being a single player horror game it takes on that resident evil third person vibe with jump scares limited ammunition puzzles to solve and being a detective there will be investigations searching these environments for answers and not knowing what is round the corner can't wait to see how these two famous actors will come together and communicate and bond throughout the game and how their relationship develops over time whilst i don't expect the combat to be as good as resident evil the focus on this game is the story there will be stealth options in the game which is also a nice choice in certain parts and it looks like a lot of effort has gone into the environments the detail when you find letters and clues throughout the game they'll actually be voice acted so you don't actually have to read them i just think it's an extra touch which is nice every day your silence weighs a little heavier in number 12 we have prince of persia the lost crown you play as sargon who is an immortal and your goal is to save the kidnapped prince but there is unexpected twists epic bosses and the game will force you to think how you're going to put these combos together to get past areas enemies and figure out where the hell you're going. Some of these puzzles are so clever and they can be so challenging. There are side quests, secret rooms, puzzles, and this is going to take you a while. So there's tons of content here. And the fun part for me is finding time crystals where you can upgrade your weapons and armor. And as you progress, you get incredible abilities such as the teleportation, the quick dash and special attacks. You can also choose from different surge abilities. And once you build up that surge bar, when you unleash it, it is brilliant. The boss fights are so damn fun and parrying is the main focus in this game it can be hard to get but once you get it man it feels so satisfying <laughs> In 
Number 11, even if you do not like fighting games, which I'm not too keen on myself, Tekken 8 has a decent story to get through. You may want to go back to Tekken 7 as it takes place six months after that, as it might not make too much sense. So I'm going to have to go back and play that probably. I don't just want to dive into it. Unless you're not too bothered. This focuses on the final confrontation between the two main characters, father and son, as they focus on the chaos within their family lineage. Just like I enjoyed the story of Mortal Kombat 1, combining the story with just the fighting sequences, I'm all for that because Mortal Kombat had a decent story, I was engaged, but then when you get into the fighting, it's just so freaking fun, man. <laughs> I've heard some divide about the story of Tekken 8, but if you're like me and just want a fun fighting game along with a decent story, this might be worth it. Over the top cutscenes, ridiculous amounts of action. In number 10, there's been a lot of great reviews for Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth from its story as well as its open world. I'm really interested in this one, but again, if you've never played any of the Yakuza games, you might want to go back and play Like a Dragon and Like a Dragon Gaiden at a minimum to understand the characters. But seeing this game makes me just want to experience because there is so much to do in in this game. There are a lot of fun mini games to play. You ride a Segway, deliver food within the time frame, but as you get past the chapters in the game, you will unlock new jobs to do. And even though I'm not a fan of turn-based combat, it's great that they have mixed the best of both worlds with implementing turn-based alongside some free-flowing movement. That's going to be added to my backlog. And what else is great is just because of that Animal Crossing sort of vibe where you get to design your own island. I think that in itself is what sold it to me. Ah, lockdown days playing Animal Crossing. Now, at number nine, if you're 30 like me, why not dive into one of the best female protagonists back in the day with Tomb Raider 1 to 3 Remastered? Ah, the PS1. <laughs> She was the hottest uh, kind of pixelated character back in the day. With the remastered version of these three games, the graphics have been updated. It includes all the DLC, but you can also switch back from the old and new graphics, which I think is really cool. If you don't know, Lara is an archaeologist adventurer, and she will travel through ancient ruins and tombs in search of artifacts. There are so many puzzles to solve, unravel mysteries, and you will come up against very lethal foes. The reviews have been really freaking good. Such a shame that Crystal Dynamics have that weird warning to at the start of the game warning about what is it ethnic and racial something something it's just i think it's just so sad you're happy to sell something that was very popular back in the day and you're like oh we could make some money but you know what because of western ways and stuff like that let's put a little notice because yeah we didn't make it we're just we're just reselling it to make more money you piece of shit in number eight, I am so excited for Rise of the Ronin. Now, I know there's people excited for it, like myself, and I know people are not too keen on the graphics and gameplay. They're like, oh, it looks a bit rough in some areas. The gameplay doesn't look smooth, but I'm totally sold on this game. I think it looks like a beautiful game, but I'm more here for the story. As long as the story is thrilling, the combat is fun, and there is a lot to do, I'm sold. <laughs> Set in the 1800s Japan, you are a master samurai and your job is to rewrite history as you will shape the story outcome with dialogue options, multiple endings, and also you will have the choice to kill or spare certain figures and targets that you meet in the game. So that will affect the story. There will also be bond missions, which based off certain side quests, people you meet in the game, you will have the choice to build bonds with that person or certain area. This has been confirmed to affect the ending of the story. The traversal looks so damn incredible with the glider, you can travel on foot, your horseback and I can't wait to just dive into the open world and the combat looks super hard and I thought there would only be one level but there is going to be a difficulty level so if you think that this is too hard you will be able to change that. <laughs> Number seven, I've spoken about Star Wars Outlaws before, and so far I'm very impressed with this game. But it's Ubisoft. Shit! And the problem with Ubisoft is that they have shown to kind of over promote, over hype games, and over promise things, and then when you get it, you're like, as long as they deliver for what they have shown so far, I think this game is going to be pretty good. You will follow the character of Kay Vess, who is an outlaw, and we have been promised that this will be an incredible massive open world with five planets so far with their own unique environments, side missions and characters. Multiple choice in terms of what character you decide to work with, and also double cross, which will affect your reputation level, which possibly will put a price on your head so you know there's going to be bandits and other people coming after you. The combat looks very flipping fluid, using different weapons, 
weapons and melee attacks and also stealth when necessary and the traversal on that damn bike the speed at which you can explore these planets at, i think that's the one thing i'm excited for i'm just wondering how much stealth is there gonna be just like that first mission was she able to get out of that little area quietly or was that or were they just showing us that there's multiple ways of getting out of a certain situation or mission that would be good i would assume and would like to know that there is multiple ways of doing a mission now in number six i know i've just done a video or a first impressions of banishers ghosts of new eden honestly do not pass this game you play as red you and your wife are banishers and she gets killed trust me it's not a spoiler it was in the marketing material so don't think i've just spoiled the game that's right at the start and they kind of promoted it with the first trailer and your goal is to find out about this entity that killed her because it's not like your usual ghost there's something bigger going on now, at first it did seem oh here we go again strong female character oh you know red is very very weak which you can kind of see in the first bit of the gameplay she is the boss and he is the side character as it is called your serving woman may sit while we talk may sit while we i'm talk. the help she's the boss ah oh, shit here we go again. Now I kept pursuing and it's up to him to find his way. And although she's there alongside his journey, I'm glad she doesn't belittle him in any way. I actually like the dynamic of both these characters because even though she is more the lead in this relationship and game, he has to step up and he has to take initiative and understand what is going on. The combat for me took some time to get used to and it does get better. So when you do get a gun in the game, which I think is amazing, it doesn't fully flow, mostly with these little enemies Enemies, especially these blue ghosts which are so annoying I just can't figure them out but the boss battles are unbelievable <laughs> as you got more abilities from Antea because you will be able to switch from her and kind of have them free flowing because they both can target certain enemies easier. It does improve, but for me, it isn't its strongest point. Where this game flipping shines is that at the start of the game, you will have to promise to Antea whether to try and resurrect her or not. And you will come across these mysteries in the game. If you want to resurrect Antea, which I decided to do, you will have to come to the most difficult decision of whether to kill these innocent people in order to help Antea get resurrected. Like, my mind was so torn between what do I do? I know what's right, but then I gave her a promise as well. You will have a difficult time figuring this out. But you did not listen. I did what I had to do. They may call it treason. I call it loyalty. Then I hope you understand what I must now do. this program to bring you Moli is an alternative to other soft drinks and damn does it taste amazing. I've been using them for a couple of months trying them out but also using them as a pre-workout. There are also non-caffeinated ones you know to get me through the night. They are under 20 calories so if you do want to support the channel and support me if you use code NEUTRO5 you will get five pounds off your first order and if you use code NEUTRO you will get 10% off your entire order. I'm loving the white peach flavor which I've got right here, pink grapefruit, but there are so many flavors and they even have an iced tea. And number five, another game I want to experience, but I feel like there are so many games coming out, but that is Dragon's Dogma 2. Looks like a huge game to dive into on your own. Four times bigger than the original. And what is great is that Capcom have stated you will not need to play the original to understand the events that happen in the second. It takes place in a parallel universe from the events of the first game, and the world consists of two prosperous nations. Vermund, the human kingdom, Batahi, Batahi? A rugged canyon nation that's home to the Beastren, which are humanoid cats. Us as the player will find ourselves caught between these two nations and their different cultural differences. You will be able to fully customize your character and you can choose from a human, elf or a beastren. You have a team and there will be a hell of a lot of NPCs where you'll get to do side quests and build relationships. And as the game is heavily RPG focused, you will be able to choose from four vocations. So depending on what sort of build you want to be, it's up to you. Boss fights look epic, they look long, they look big. You'll be able to use your environment as well to help defeat these enemies you'll be able to climb on your enemies the more i see of it the more i'm sold now number four if you haven't heard of phantom blade zero oh my gosh 
This looks absolutely crazy. You play a soul, a talented assassin, and you work for the organization called The Order. Now you are framed from the murder and die, but you get revived by a mystic healer. But it only lasts 66 days, so you only have 66 days to find out why you were double-crossed and what the hell was going on. What I love about this game is that it will be a semi-open world game, and the developer said they would rather have detailed zones rather than go for reused assets for that open world feel, as they are on a budget. Plus, I feel like open world games, this you know, so many people try it and then it ends up just being bloated. So I'm happy to have a more linear experience. The world looks bleak. The protagonist looks like he's going to have a lot of backstory about him. This is one of my most anticipated for 2024. There's going to be a variety in enemies, bosses, and they've described this game as Kung Fu Punk. In number three, another game that is on my list is Black Myth Wukong. Based off Chinese mythology, game of the year contender, I'm saying it now. Playing as Sun Wukong, the Monkey King, he has the ability to transform into many different creatures and with a hell of a lot of abilities. There will be 72 abilities in the game. The combat looks incredible and has been inspired by Dark Souls. Combat looks fast paced and with your staff, we've seen that it will even be able to change size. We will be able to infuse his staff with different elemental attacks there is so much variety in the gameplay and use these certain animals and insects to traverse these amazing environments there's going to be a variety in enemies animals big bosses and we'll even be fighting against armies this looks like an absolutely beautiful game and number two a game which you know the western media are not going to like and they've shown that they don't because what stella blade what she's too good looking guys her figure's too good oh no western media Humanity is driven from Earth after losing a war to the aliens called Naitiba. Eve, the very good looking character that we will control and her squad are deployed from the colony to fight the aliens and take back Earth. And we got six minutes of footage recently from that PlayStation showcase and it looks so good. It looks like a cross between Bayonetta and Devil May Cry. And being an RPG, there is so much to improve our arsenal on. There will be camps to acquire new skills, upgrade equipment, rest to restore health, and there'll be people in need, which means lots of side quests, which we will have the control over to say no or yes. And the weapons in the game. Wow, just, just, I'm sold. I'm sold. All squad members exist for one sole purpose. You mean the extinction of all natives, right? To think that the point of your existence is to snuff out another species. And in number one, some of you may be playing this game already, so you need to let me know what you think Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Now, I won't be playing it only because I need Final Fantasy VII Remake to get through, so there's no telling when I'm going to dive into this game. I've heard it takes a hell of a long time to platinum this game. There is so much to do in this game. It's going to be that huge, it comes on two damn discs. It's got incredible reviews, along with the story, you will care for your chocobo, go swimming, climb, and travel. You can change the color buy new cosmetics for your chocobo and much more. Now I don't think I need to convince anyone to play this game because chances are you know more about it than I do and if you played Seven Remake you're most probably going to play this on day one. I think if you're like me who's not used to the combat because I prefer traditional combat I really need to give a go the turn-based combat along with some free-flowing combat because it has the best of both worlds. I'm not too keen on it but I do need to give Seven Remake a, a massive try so I can get used to it and hopefully I love it and go into it just looking forward to seven rebirth so what do you think about the single player games i have mentioned have i missed any drop your thoughts in the comments and let me know and let's check the comment of the day from my previous video shout out to lady and red i pre-ordered this and started playing it on release i'm loving it love story driven games and the combat for me is decent the graphics are beautiful i love the time period it also has replayability given that it has several endings based on your choice i know that a lot of people are not talking about banishers but oh my gosh this is a game that you need to play currently put over 35 hours into the game and the amount of choice is more than I ever thought. If you want to check out another video you can click on the one here and I'll see you in the next.